good evening. You're watching the main news on HKIBC. I'm Johanna Chan. Here's a look at tonight's top stories. <laughs> Carrie Lam lays down roadmap to reopen the city's businesses, while inbound flight bans on nine countries will end on April 1st. More than 130 people feared dead after a China Eastern plane crashes in Guangxi. Hong Kongers will have to wait another month before they can dine out at night or visit gyms under a three-stage roadmap to roll back social distancing measures. Inbound flight bans on nine countries will be lifted on April 1st, with shorter quarantine for arrivals. Joanna Ho reports. Those hoping for an instant relaxation of social distancing measures were left disappointed, as Carrie Lam said most existing regulations will run through the 20th of April as scheduled. But for the first time, the chief executive provided a three-step plan to reopen the economy. In the first phase on the 21st of April, dinner dine-ins will be allowed again at restaurants, while up to four people can be seated at one table but bars will remain closed. The public gathering limit will be raised from two to four people. Gyms, beauty salons and other premises can reopen, as well as most public leisure facilities. In the subsequent stage, restaurants may accommodate eight customers per table until midnight, and bars can resume business. Groups of eight people will be allowed in public areas, while public beaches and swimming pools can welcome visitors again. People can go mask-free when exercising outdoors or visiting country parks. In the final stage, only basic anti-epidemic measures will remain. But face coverings will still be required in public, as well as the use of the Leave Home Safe app and the vaccine pass at certain premises. Uh, we will uh, widely uh, consult the various stack stakeholders in Hong Kong and uh, to come up with a more uh, permanent uh, pathway uh, for Hong Kong to tackle any public health crisis in a more targeted manner. In a major relief for businesses, the inbound flight ban on nine countries will be lifted from the 1st of April. Overseas arrivals will be free to leave quarantine after one week. But a lawmaker found it unacceptable that the restriction was not rolled back immediately. Now, the reason for uh, having a start date two weeks from now is to prepare for hotel rooms and airline and whatnot. Then government tying a policy to prediction of market demand, which I don't think will be very accurate anyway. So I think this two we get should be shortened. In her defense, Lam insisted time was needed to boost manpower at the airport. Joanna Ho, HKIBC. There were mixed reactions after the government put the brakes on a planned mass testing exercise. Some lawmakers supported the decision, while others felt it was a missed opportunity to reopen the city's borders with the mainland. Maisie Mock reports. After weeks of speculation, the compulsory universal testing, which was meant to take place this month, has been suspended at last. Carrie Lam cited a number of challenges in rolling out the massive exercise, which would require 80,000 support workers each day. She insisted the decision was made with the consensus of local and mainland health experts. Mainland experts have told me that Hong Kong lacks the community organization and mobilization, she said, insisting timing was key. Executive Council member Regina Eep said she believed the decision was made with the blessing of the central government. I'm sure the government has taken into account the um, local conditions, uh, whether the timing, both the timing and whether we have the appropriate conditions for undertaking a compulsory community-wide test. The chief executive did not rule out doing a community-wide testing uh, at a later stage because uh, based on even the mainland experts consider that the best timing to do a community-wide testing is either at the start of uh, the, the, uh, a pandemic or toward the end. 
you know, so that we can flush out all remaining unknown cases. Fellow lawmaker Michael Tian urged authorities to press ahead with mass testing in April if it means Hong Kong residents can once again travel to the mainland quarantine-free. Maisie Mock, HKIBC. The shift in the government's COVID strategy came as Hong Kong saw daily infections go down for the fifth consecutive day. And there are signs the strain on public hospitals may soon alleviate. Here's Maisie Mock again. There were another 14,068 COVID infections, the fifth consecutive day of decline, but at a much slower pace. More than two-thirds of the cases were screened through rapid antigen tests. In another positive sign, no additional care homes reported an outbreak yesterday. This is a good sign. The reason may be that uh, the overall situation has been uh, stabilized in the past few days. And also, um, most of the um, residents in the care homes have, have been exposed to the virus. And some of the others unexposed may have been vaccinated. So we still have to observe for uh, a longer period of time. There were an additional 223 COVID-related deaths, including 44 backlog cases. The hospital authority said over 11,000 COVID patients remain at hospitals and other facilities dedicated for people who caught the virus. In what could be a watershed moment, Chief Manager Larry Lee said the numbers of new patients and those discharged are now starting to balance. That means there could be finally relief for the public health care system, which for months has been under severe stress. Maisie Mock, HKIBC. Across the border, public transport has resumed in Shenzhen, which is coming out of a week-long lockdown to rein in a COVID outbreak. But certain districts remained sealed off. Chloe Feng reports. <laughs> This was probably how one would feel like after being locked down at home for almost a month. But there was finally relief for frustrated residents in Shenzhen as the tech hub gradually lifted restrictions. The city's public transport was back in operation, while residential communities celebrated as they met each other for the first time in one week. But a number of districts remained sealed off, including Fu Tian, just across the border from Hong Kong. In an open letter posted on Weibo, some buildings in Fu Tian have been largely under lockdown since February the 22nd, when infections were first detected. Apart from a lack of daily necessities, residents also complained that rubbish has been piling up at collection points. Some distressed residents let out their anger, shouting they could not stand it anymore. Several Fu Tin officials have already been dismissed for their handling of the latest outbreak. And the area remains under closed-loop management as of this morning. Across the mainland, there were 1,947 locally acquired cases yesterday. 80 percent of which from Jilin province. Shanghai is also on high alert after tallying another 734 asymptomatic infections. The Disneyland Resort has been shut down until further notice. Chloe Fong, HKIBC. In other news, Rescue workers are still ascertaining the casualties after a China Eastern plane carrying 123 passengers and nine crew members crashed in Guangxi this afternoon. Online footage showed what is believed to be the Boeing 737 falling through the sky into the mountain. The flight MU5735 took off from Kunming for Guangzhou at around 1 p.m. But the plane lost control about an hour later near Wuzhou City. The crash triggered a fire at the scene. Authorities are looking into the cause of the accident. Overseas, a humanitarian crisis is brewing in the Ukrainian city of Mariupol, which has largely been reduced to rubble amid fierce Russian bombardment. But the government rejected a request by Moscow to hand over the city. 
The siege of Mariupol has left the city in tatters and its weary residents traipsing across destroyed buildings and shelters. While morale has hit rock bottom, the people were far from heeding a dawn deadline set by Moscow to surrender their city. An estimated 300,000 people are still under siege, lacking food, water and power. The city's council said several thousands of residents were deported to Russia in the past week. Moscow has denied the claims. Over half of the 7,000 people evacuated through humanitarian corridors yesterday were from Mariupol, according to the Ukrainian government. Further evacuations are planned, although the arrangements remain fragile. Over in the capital, Kyiv, a shopping center and a residential district were bombed overnight, according to surveillance footage released by the state emergency service. Over 100 reports of fire were filed from Podolsky district, with at least six people perishing from the shellings. As the war raged on, President Volodymyr Zelensky thanked Israel for making an effort to broker peace talks for Ukraine and Russia. In a video address, the president, who was Jewish himself, drew parallels between Putin's military aggression with the Nazi persecution of Jews. Meanwhile, U.S. President Joe Biden will travel to Belgium and Poland this week to discuss efforts to support Ukraine. But the White House said there are no plans to visit the country. Hong Kong Disneyland thanked staff for going on unpaid leave as it narrowed losses to $2.4 billion last year, a 12 percent improvement. Chloe Fung reports. Despite being forced to shut down for 40 percent of calendar days, Hong Kong Disneyland reported what it called a very encouraging result for 2021. With foreign tourists gone, local visits jumped by a record 117 percent year-on-year. Altogether, there were 2.8 million visitors, a 64 percent surge, although it was still far from pre-pandemic levels. Revenue was up 19 percent to $1.7 billion, and coupled with a reduction in costs and expenses, the park registered a loss of $2.4 billion, a 12 percent improvement. Managing Director Michael Mariotti said they have tried very hard to preserve jobs. Our cast was under unpaid leave for the entire year. Um, and so for that, I think um, I, we are com you know, completely grateful to their commitment and the personal sacrifice that they made and so right now, uh, we, we don't have plans to, to, to go back to unpaid leave. Certainly the news today is very encouraging on that front, too, with our reopening again um, in late April. Moriarty added they have no plans to raise ticket prices or apply for government subsidies to stay afloat. Chloe Fong, HKIBC. Now let's take a look at the markets. The Hang Seng Index was down 191 points. To the top 10 active stocks, Tencent down $8.60, Alibaba up $0.75, cents, Meituan down $9.40. Ping'an down $3.25, Kuaishou down $4.60, and Wusi Bio up $2.05. To the forex trading against the Hong Kong dollar, the euro is trading at 8.63, British pound at 10.28, and Australian dollar at 5.78. Over in the UK market, the FTSE 100 is up 37 points. On to the weather now. Gloomy conditions set in tomorrow, which will be cloudy with rain becoming frequent later in the day. Temperatures will range between 22 and 25 degrees. Expect thunderstorms on a much cooler Wednesday. Now let's take a look at the weather around the world. That's our main news for Monday night. Join us for more news at 11. I'm Johanna Chan. Thanks for watching. Good night.